All right, guys, in today's video, we're going to be having a discussion about Sony's aggressive push into live service gaming. This is something that a lot of PlayStation fans have an opinion on because Sony has made it clear that this is something they are pursuing aggressively going forward. And with that, we can expect to see some very different types of games coming from PlayStation Studios and their partners throughout this generation. So not only do I want to discuss this with you, go over some information and give my thoughts on it, but I'm going to be asking you a question and I'm hoping you will answer it in the comment section down below. I'm going to be paying very close attention to the comments on this video. Do you think Sony is making a mistake by pursuing live service games so aggressively? I know that people have a strong opinion on this and many of you are going to say yes absolutely many of you are going to say no it's fine but i think just as many are going to kind of be in the middle where they can see the pros and the cons they can see how this can be a good thing but there are also some potentially very big pitfalls that sony may end up falling into and so yeah i'll be interested to see what you guys have to say uh before we get into it make sure you hit the like button to help the video out. And if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button as well. But I'm starting here by pointing out recent news. I'm sure many of you heard about this, but in case you missed it, Sony officially confirmed that they have 10 live service games in development. And what's even more interesting than that is they are telling their investors and their shareholders that they are planning to release up to 10 live service games by 20. 26. That is definitely significant because what that means is that a lot of these games are likely far along in development and many of them are going to be revealed soon and they will be releasing sooner rather than later. Now, this immediately caused a lot of concern with PlayStation fans because when you think about what has made PlayStation a dominant force and what has allowed them to not only find the success that they have today but also kind of stand out is their single player games sony is known to deliver some incredible triple a cinematic single player games that a lot of other publishers try to do but don't do as well but many other publishers just don't even try at all and they have seemingly given up on single player although i think it's getting better but the point is this is what sony has done really really well this is what they've done best you could say and you know playstation fans and gamers alike are concerned that by sony pursuing 10 live service games within such a short period of time that it's going to come at the expense of single player games now i'm going to say right now i do not envision a future no matter how successful some of these live service games could end up being for sony where they decide to stop making single player games i just don't think that will ever be a thing PlayStation is aware that single player games is at the heart of the brand and the core following that PlayStation has, the fan base, the players, most of them do play these single player games and do expect them to be there. So Sony's not going to do something that's going to, you know, make that core fan base be like, you know what, I don't want to play on PlayStation anymore because they're not making single player games. It's just not going to happen no matter how successful some of their live service games are. That's my opinion. But when I look at PlayStation Studios and the way that they've been growing in the past couple years, I think it does reveal some interesting things. The first thing it reveals, obviously, is that Sony is trying to scale up in a very significant way. We obviously immediately pay attention to the recent acquisitions such as Bungie, Haven Studio, Bluepoint, Housemark, so on and so forth, and, you know, Fire Sprite, there will be more acquisitions, there's no doubt about that, but something else that I think a lot of people are not aware of is that while Sony is also out there acquiring studios and trying to bring on new talent and new teams, they are also doubling and tripling down on the teams that they currently own and that have been a part of PlayStation Studios for a long time. Studios such as Naughty Dog, Sucker Punch, Santa Monica, London Studio, Guerrilla Games, and the list kind of goes on here. These studios are having a lot of money put into them so that way they can essentially create two or three separate development teams. And so this way, we'll use Guerrilla Games as an example. While Guerrilla Games was working on Horizon Forbidden West, a massive AAA open world single player narrative driven game, they also have a second AAA team that they essentially built. They created this team back in, 
I believe 2017, 2018, and they started work on a new AAA multiplayer project, which is no doubt going to be one of these live service games. And I think that when you look at that and you see that it is actual proof that, okay, well, that game's development had essentially no impact on Horizon Forbidden West. And by that, I mean, it didn't get in the way, it didn't take away from it. And I think we're gonna see very similar things with many of Sony studios. We are seeing that with Naughty Dog, for example. Naughty Dog puts out a game like The Last of Us Part Two. It is a very high production value, very high quality, AAA single player game. But the next project that they're going to be revealing is a standalone multiplayer Last of Us game that is obviously going to be a service game. I don't think anybody is anticipating that once Naughty Dog puts this game out, that's it. They're done working on single player games. We should not expect any more single player titles from Naughty Dog. Absolutely not. It's not going to work that way. They are currently working on another single player game. Who knows what that game is, but there's no doubt that we're going to get that after this Last of Us multiplayer game. And I think that this is the approach that Sony is taking with not every one of their first party studios, but quite a few of them like Sucker Punch. You look at how they handled Ghost of Tsushima Legends and Insomniac Games. They're working on two AAA single player games, that being Spider-Man 2, as well as Wolverine. But they're also working on a third title, which is a multiplayer game. And you would assume that it's going to be one of these live service titles that Sony is referring to. And I have to imagine that there are quite a few other projects that are in development behind the scenes between PlayStation Studios and their partners that we don't yet know about that will be single player, that won't actually be multiplayer. Or maybe they'll be single player, but they'll have like a co-op portion. And I don't necessarily think it's gonna be like a service game. This is kind of what I'm anticipating. It's also worth noting that, as I said, as Sony continues to scale up their uh, studios, they are partnering with others such as Deviation Games and Firewalk. These are studios that have not really been known for anything, really. They're not known to make single player games, but they have a lot of veteran talent who worked on games like Call of Duty, Destiny, Halo, Titanfall, things like this, where they're making these types of games and they're starting their game as a live service from the start. And Sony kind of wants to try to bring them on board in case one of them does end up producing something really great. Maybe, you know, the next big hit live service game Sony wants to be part of that if they're able to. And I think that that is a better approach than attempting to mandate that every single one of your studios starts putting all of their resources and all of their, you know, talent on making live service games. That would be pretty terrible. I think we can all agree with that. Now, there's another aspect to this that we do need to talk about with Sony pursuing so many live service games. How exactly are they going to handle monetization? I think that this is one of the biggest concerns that people have when it comes to Sony pursuing live service games like this. And I think it's absolutely a fair concern because not only have we seen other publishers mess this up badly, but we just saw Sony kind of mess it up themselves right out of the gate with GT7 where people were not happy and they had to suddenly adjust things and listen to the community because they thought that what they had set up was fine and there were no issues but clearly that was not the case with the player base and it just wasn't a good first impression with gt7 being a live service game so now obviously more people are concerned that well i guess this is how it's going to be with many of their games and it could be i will say the most concerning thing here is that gt7 is being sold as a 70 dollar game that does also offer quite a few microtransactions and sony was seemingly trying to kind of nudge people in that direction like they obviously want you to buy the microtransactions on top of having already paid full price for the game now i don't know what sony's plans are for their other games for example like the last of us multiplayer i think it would be very wise of sony if they're focused on microtransactions and recurring revenue in that way having that recurrent revenue stream, they should focus on making as many of these games free to play as they possibly can because it is absolutely not going to be a good look if Sony comes out here and says, here's our Last of Us Online game, pay us 70 bucks and you can expect to see just a flood of microtransactions. And even if they don't have any effect over the gameplay, still, I don't think it's gonna be a good look. But more importantly, I don't think that that's how you create a successful live service game that is i guess you could say one of the most played games in the world the only way sony's going to be able to do that in my opinion is 
it's by making many of these games free to play. Now, whether or not they're going to do that remains to be seen. We will find out when they announce these games. But yeah, this is kind of where we stand. Sony is in this position where they have seemingly followed a formula with single player narrative driven AAA games that has worked for them and they're not going to stop that anytime soon. In fact, I don't, as I said, I don't think they're going to stop it ever. And that's continuing to work really well for them, but they see a big growth area in live service games. In fact, Sony is so confident in live service games being the future of growth within their brand and within gaming that Jim Ryan recently said in an interview with GamesIndustry.biz that he doesn't believe a Game Pass-like, Netflix-like model is where their future success lies. He believes that live service games, such as what we see with titles like Fortnite, GTA Online, etc., you know, these games have proven that, look, these games are almost looked at as subscription services in themselves. And I do completely understand that. And I know that a lot of people get concerned when they hear games like GTA Online and Fortnite. But one thing that you do have to understand is that there is a reason why these games are so successful. There is a reason why millions upon millions of players are still there every day, every week, every month engaged with this game and why these games also happen to make the most money. It's because even though these games may not be for me or they may not be for you and they may not be something that you engage with, they are good games. Good enough to where people, as I said, like to continue to exist in those worlds, go back to them and play them. And you really can't fault Sony or I think any other game publisher for wanting to also achieve that, right? I mean, to me, the idea of a Last of Us online game, like what we're about to get from Naughty Dog, where it's a persistent world, they're constantly uh, changing it and evolving it. And there's always something new to look forward to. And you get that amazing gameplay that was there in The Last of Us Part Two. You get to create your own character. You get to go on missions. You get to just go out there in some type of maybe open world and explore. And then maybe they also have some PvP competitive aspects. That sounds awesome to me. Like a, a way I can always kind of interact with that world of The Last of Us. And then, you know, I get to look forward to whatever single player titles that Naughty Dog or any of their other studios want to put out um, alongside that. And I think that this is where Sony can find that uh, good balance. And as somebody who is a fan of both single player and multiplayer gaming, I am genuinely rooting for Sony to succeed here and do it right. As long as they can keep pumping out great single player content and games, and as long as they are mindful and thoughtful about the way they're going to handle monetization and they do it right way they make it fair they make it balanced i think this could be a great thing and one last thing i do want to say here before i end this discussion video is for anybody who maybe thinks that sony is getting away from their roots or something like that by doing this they're actually not i want to remind people that sony had a pretty significant multiplayer presence during the playstation 3 days or even back with the playstation 2 with some games like socom but definitely during the playstation 3 era, they were trying to find some pretty significant success with multiplayer games. And unfortunately, nothing really caught on for Sony in the way that they had hoped with games like Killzone and Warhawk and many others. And so I think it actually makes sense that now that they've established kind of a new footing here with single player games, they're going to try this again. And I think now in 2022, it makes more sense than ever before for Sony to do something like this. So yeah, that's pretty much going to do it for the video, guys. As I said, I want you to leave your thoughts down below and answer that question. Do you think this is a mistake or do you think that this is actually going to be a good thing for PlayStation in the long run? Be sure to leave it a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon and feel free to share the video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.